everyone, it's 29th of July. Uh, I've come down to actually dig these potatoes out now, the um, second earlies. Uh, we'll have a bit of a look at the oil after, because when I was down a few days ago, there was a few little bits of blight, picked the leaves off, and this, it's it's there, it's here, you know. So uh, we'll have a look at that at some point through the video. So for those of you out there who doesn't, don't know particularly what you're looking for, you get an idea. If you've not seen it already, you plot something that's looking a bit uh, untoward. The weather isn't great. We had a little bit of rain. I want to try and get these out before the rain, so I'm hoping the sky's full of cloud. So it's probably going to rain at some point today, but I just want to get these out. Um, if I can get my garlic done, fine, but that'll, that'll be in this video, but I'll probably do it at a later date, that. I've got some peas in the van, which I'm hoping to get put in there. Uh, for another rerun, they're a bit patchy, but I've, I've got a few pea seeds with me, and I'd sown some more the other week in module trays, so I can thicken them up in a couple of weeks. Whether they come to anything, I don't know, because it's, it's quite late in the year, really. Should have been there, they should have been planted actually in a couple of weeks ago, really. But you know, you don't know until you try. So, uh, they're all I said, they're all second early. So, you've got uh, Jazzy's, Charlotte's, and the Maris Piers. So usually the Maris Piers are usually a bit more of a heavier cropper. Uh, Charlotte's do okay, Jazz is a quite a small potato but you do get some quite big ones. Um, they're all planted around the 20th of April I think. So they probably had pretty much around the right sort of time but we've had, we had a cold start and we've had a big dry spell so that obviously affects the growing. Um, but I'll be quite happy if I get, uh, you know, 20 odd pound per row. It's, it's better than nothing. Ideally, I'd like, you know, maybe 25 to 30 out of that one, and maybe 30 to 40 out of this one, and then 40 to 50 out of this row. But I will weigh them, and I'll probably pop it in the description, uh, what I actually ended up with off, you know, out, out of these three rows. Uh, I'm not going to film it all, I'll just put it on a bit of a time lapse, uh, because it's just the same thing. It's lovely seeing potatoes come up, but it's, it's back breaking digging them. Uh, it's not a job I look forward to doing, but I enjoy seeing the potatoes come out, because they've been sat in there for, you know, that's like you know, 14 weeks or something like that, so it's nice to see what actually comes out. So I came down the other night, I put my cauliflowers in, I've replanted my second run, uh, see how that goes. It's very root bound, um, quite small plants, so hopefully they'll get some roots out and grow a bit before they start trying to form a curd, otherwise they're going to be tiny curds. Um, but never mind, you know, and I'm just waiting for my onions to finish. Should be toppling any time now. Um, so right, we'll crack on with this and uh, hopefully be no rain while I'm doing it. I don't mind if it chucks it down afterwards, but uh, while I'm here, <laughs> I could do without any rain really. Trying to keep these potatoes as dry as I can, for obviously reasons, because uh, of the blight spores and things like that around. But uh, I'll just have to make sure if they get wet, get them home, make sure they dry fully before I sack them. Right, so we shall crack on with that. So I'm just going to dig them, dig them up and I'll probably just throw them on there, this first row. Um, that's just obviously some compost that's hilled up there. It's probably end up getting raked across this bed. But uh, right, let's see what we've got on the way of jazzies. There's been a few that have popped out the side. I think birds have been down having a do. So I'll guarantee I'll probably bust a few with fork, but it happens. Let's see what we get. I say I like usually leaving the little plant stubs in so I can see where the plants are, but uh, I just have to sort of just. Be careful, something nice when it's dry, they're, they're nice and clean. But, uh, not wrong with them. They are very much shaped like Charlotte's jazzies are. Bit of a damage in that one. I'll sort through them before I sack them anyway. Because I want to sort of size them. Because otherwise, you end up with a sack of tiny ones all at the bottom. So it's that dry, it's quite, uh, it probably end up being quite a few volunteer ones. Any, I think any don't actually look really manky around the throw now. Just get a bucket. I don't know how well you can hear me because obviously there's quite a bit of wind. But, uh, so you'll get a general, general gist. There's quite a few off this first plant, I'll tell you that now. So I'll be quite happy with that. If they're all like that anyway. Actually, that one with teeth marking it or beak mark. Get rid of that. You don't mind if you get a few things um, that go bad. If 
other things make up for it and you have a good, good haul. It's like, don't get deceived because sometimes you can dig a couple of plants up and they do really well for some reason and then you get further down and there's, they're not doing as well. But it's like really dry that soil. So we, we are due like real horrendous rain. So uh, it's nice to get them out clean. I will have a second uh, dig through this lot anyway at some point. Because you always miss a few. Especially if it's dry and crumbly like this. You know, it's like really dry. It's never actually broke up from when I sort of loosely chucked it over. Yeah, so that's off, like one plant, I think, that lot, so I'm hoping I don't fork too many like that because they're a good size spud. And there's a dry hard lump of soil there. I'm sure I'll probably end up knocking a few of these Charlottes out behind me as I go as well, probably. I mean, this is like yeah, really nice soil and that. You can just shove your hands in and pull them out. It's uh, not a five minute job, so it's gonna be a most of the day job this thing to get them out. You can leave them in the ground, but they're just sort of uh, susceptible to slug damage. Plus, if there's any sort of nasty bugs, they'll lay on any volunteer ones, and if you dig them out at a later date, you'll get them out as well. That's the idea, anyway. Two, three, four. Right, I've just got a few more plants to dig up of the jazzies. Uh, I've lost a few, probably, I don't know, 10, 15, different sizes. Some I've whacked with a fork and some have got, some are dodgy looking on them. So I thought, well, instead of putting them in and risking damaging the rest of the stuff, I'll just sling them, because I've got quite a few. Some decent size, some small, yeah. Probably some of them could have done with another week or two, but on the whole, they're all... They're all okay, to be honest. What they weigh, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. So, so I bag them. I might weigh them once I've dug them up. Find it, find a big bag of something, and see what I've got. And then uh, give this a, a second flick over. Just give me a bit of a rest while I'm sort of uh, bagging them up. Just in case it all of a sudden starts chucking it down and they're not sat out here in the soil then. I can dry them off in the kitchen at home or if it's, at least if it's nice at, when I get home I can keep an eye on them. Because you don't want, uh, you know, unless it was nice bright skies, I don't want three rows of potatoes sat out fully exposed to black spores and all sorts because I need that rain to wash them in. Because they haven't got like really thick skins on these or anything. You want decent skins on it. Leave them in the ground for a little bit. They will plump up a little bit as well. You leave them in the ground for a couple more weeks. But uh, I've just had it on here a few times where I've lost so many to, to slugs once I leave them in the ground. You know, it's, uh, it's a bit unsightly when you. Peeling your spuds and full of little tiny holes everywhere, slug holes. I used to think it was something else, but I used to find them in there now and then. Oh well, yeah, I'll compost all this potato stuff in here as well. Because all that'll end up going in the two new beds and it year. But uh 
I'm more than happy enough with this lot to be honest. So I say you get the odd one like that up for, but I've just been I can't bother chopping round them and that I'll just uh, just get rid of them. Otherwise I'll start leaking out in the sack and everything and cause a lot of problems. You know, that turn it starts smelling rotten and attracting flies in. It's just easy to either put it to one side now or sling it. It's weird how the very end plants have been the most productive. I don't know why. Yeah, this one's like the most productive as well. I think it's because there's been... Because uh, that soil's quite compacted at either end on the pass. It hasn't dried out as bad. So I think, you know, there's an element of... Because it's definitely darker here. So I think there's an element of uh, lack of moisture at play this year. You know, but you have to watch it. If you get like a, a sudden downpour of rain, it can encourage them to split. I've had that before. I mean, they're okay, like, but... Uh, so again, they end up a bit of a nightmare to sort of peel. But, you know, these, like this, you just wash them. Not even bother peeling them out. You know, jazzies are a... They are a good, good spot, to be honest, jazzies. I'll bag these up and then I'll just give that a quick flick over with a spade because I think there's a few small ones there. Drop them, be, you know, between the, the actual prongs of the fork. I'll just give it a quick flick over with a spade. I'm not bothered about raking it all nice and levelling that because I'm going to load it up with compost and manure at some point in the next couple of weeks. Pre preferably before weeds start to grow all over it because they will do. Now the uh, canopy of potato tops is gone. I'm surprised now how quick the weeds grow. Yeah, I'll bag them up. Do a quick flick over in this and then uh, I'll weigh them, I think. Right, they're all in there. Uh, I did put them in this bag first, but uh, I was wondering why as I was going along, I was leaving some spuds behind and uh, finally sort of uh, decided to give up. So look, I had this green tub with me, so I thought I'll shove them in there and weigh them. Uh, no string to and sort of tie the angles together. Um, I just mocked up a bit of wood, put a couple of cable ties around it, so hopefully uh, I'll have to weigh the tub after and just take that off. It's probably only a couple of pounds or something. I've probably lost a couple of pounds of spuds, to be honest, as well, but, uh, you know, just because of what well, I've damaged and that. So if I put this on here, it should sort of discount this wood. Yeah, so it's on zero now. No idea what there is. It's definitely over twenty pounds anyway. Oh, you can see. I'm trying to see if it'll come in focus. Forty-eight pound. So I just need to work out what that tub weighs. It's probably a couple of pounds. So it's, even if I said forty-five pound, it's, uh, it's it's more than enough than what I wanted. So I've done all right there. So I'm, I'm more than happy with that. So we've got to get on with these shards now before it rains because it's getting pretty dark and gloomy now. But that's what crack on with them. I've just got this uh, end one here to dig out now. Uh, it's been a bit of a miss to be honest. You know, there's been some plants that have been really productive and others with hardly anything on. So what's well, down to? But it's definitely like this end. It's a bit moister here. There was there was a, a bigger yield here. And there was right at the top end there, but in the middle it's a bit, you know, a miss. But still, you know, it's uh, not been a bad year. They're a lot bigger at the end as well. But, uh, I've dinked a few. I've got a few that have got a little bit like a pinkish, watery look to them, so I've slung them because they just end up um, leaking all over the other ones and rotted them, so... I'd rather not have any of that. But, uh, Charlotte's usually pretty, pretty... You can go on a bit like a first ale if you want. But 
the uh, the jazzies are the ones I grow for. If you want, if you want lots of small spuds, uh, jazzies are great for that. I might go to shop tomorrow and get some lamb. Quite a fancy having a leg of lamb with some boiled tatties. Get some peas out of the freezer. New cauliflower up. That's about your lot really. Just sort of flick that over again. There's quite a few small spuds that have dropped, three to four, but well, they can stay down there the year for every day picking them out. But like not as much. Might be a similar weight because they're quite bigger, you know, probably bigger, but so we'll find that out. Uh, I've weighed that tub, it's 2.1 pounds, I just say it's two pounds, so it worked out 46 pounds in the jazzies. Um because I had to put in a tray now out of the way in the shed in case it started chucking it down. But uh, so far it's been fine. So I'm just gonna get my actual uh, spade probably and just flick this over a bit. I've had to try and dig this a bit wider because there were a few that have been tucked down the sides. I don't think I'll have a rest for half an hour I think because I'm a bit knackered. Right, we'll get on with that and then uh, weigh them. And then uh, it's a can of pop time, I think. Yeah, that's all uh, set to zero now. Put that in there. Carefully lift it. What have we got here? Come on. Forty-seven point three nine pounds. So it's actually uh, similar to the the jazzies, you know, a little bit less maybe. So it's that takes it. It's forty-five pound. Just say forty-five pound for what it is. You know, so uh, just over ninety pound of spuds off two rows. Third row to go. See what the old uh, Maris peers do. Then we've got beans, blueberries. Uh, see what else I can get done today. But uh, it's time for a rest. We kind of pop. So these are the Maris Piers. So let's see how we get on with these. I'm just going to pop these straight in this tub as I go, I think. Just in case I've got to get out of the way of the rain. And I'll have to come back another day and finish it not what I wanted to do really. So I shall uh, I'll crack on with these and then hopefully we'll get to finish them today as well. Oh. And uh, typical go and get on with fork and start. Not bad size anyway. Right, I'll crack on with these. So, digging the rest of these last lap built now. I've done all right. You, you never get tired of sort of digging spuds out and you flip it over, especially when you've done all right. And you get good with all the spuds like that. You know, Morris Piers, they've, they've always been, you know, if everything else has gone a bit haywire, these have usually always done all right. If you have any problems with anything, they store well. Small ones make great sour potatoes, make great chips, you can roast them, just a good all rounder. You know, there's a lot, there's hundreds of different potato varieties you can grow. I'll find a few that work well for you and just stick with them, I think. I mean, I was a bit reluctant to grow the uh, Sarpo Mira for a while. I don't mind them. I just don't tend to find they do that well for me, but you never know. Let's see how this year's get on when they come up. Leave them as long as I can. Try and get some bulk on them. Oh. I'd be quite happy if I get a good there. Uh, 50 odd pound in this. You 
you know, it always tends to be anywhere between 40 and 60 pound per roll when when it's a decent sort of season. In the odd time, I've had quite ridiculous amounts, but you can't gamble on that all the time. Definitely tiring work, but it's a lot easier to dig them up than dig, just dig the soil over. I'm not looking forward to having to do that. Good size spud. I like them that size because they're great, they're great for chipping. Like so I'm getting the M one. It must be because it's got the dampness from the path. It can uh, get a bit of water in it. More room in my tub now. A few worms down there, which is nice to see. One's not hanging out of rotten spuds, I don't mind. Not really still any some walls like a maggoty type of rub thing, so. Right, I'm gonna give this all a Really quick flick over and get these weighed, I think, before it rains. At least that's the spot safely out of the ground. Right, it's weighing time. That's the end of digging for today, anyway. Thank God. Just a bit of picking. I'll probably get these potatoes off to the van and then casually potter away for the rest of the day. Let's get that all there. Yep, that's on zero. So, we've had a... I don't know if it's going to work. Let's see if I know. Oh, what have we got? Come on. Fifty-one and a half pound. He won't lock. Fifty-one and a half pound. So we've got about ninety-one off the other ones. Call that fifty. So, but if you just say under a forty pound of spuds, you know, there's a few extra. So uh, three rolls, average of fifty pound a row. <laughs> you know, so if you've got like. 22 plants in you've got over two pound a plant which for like an early or a second early ain't bad obviously your main croppers are the ones that give the real big weights you know a couple more weeks these have been all right obviously it's been a dry spell ground's not great here but it's a crop and having a bad start like coal probably onions things are all chunking up and if I get a bonus crop with the second run stuff, all the collie and that, then that's even better. It kind of uh, makes up for that hideous start to the year with all compost problems and the, the cold April and that. Right, so I'll get these potatoes all lugged over to the van, have a clear up and just do a bit of light picking work and uh, we'll have a look at what I pick at the end of the day. Right, after a bit of uh, deciding, can of pop thinking, another can of pop thinking, the wind's just blowing this over, so I'm actually gonna gonna lift this garlic now and get it home. Um, it's just gonna pour it down over the next few days, and it'll all be laying flat. So while it's nice, saving me getting soaking wet, I thought, you know what, stuff it. I'll get it out, and uh, I'll get what I get from it. So it should be a bit of garlic anyway. Just see how difficult it is to get up first. <laughs> Could have done my little hand fork really, but we shall just see how we get on. It is quite uh, firm this bed. I'll pull a couple up just to check first. But, uh, yeah, they're a decent size, them. Um. Bit of cleaning off and whatnot, they'll be fine. 
good old lump. But uh, yeah, they're well, well anchored in. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna take a bit of time to get these up, I think. But, uh, I will wash them off. I know some people say don't bother, but uh, I can clean and then I can start the drying process. But uh, yeah, they're a decent size. But uh, I'll wash them off tomorrow. Leave them in the shed tonight at home and then I'll deal with them tomorrow. So I'll pull a few beetroot, which we'll have a look at after. And then uh, see how we go. I'm going to get my gloves actually, I think. And then get the rest of that up and then we'll have a look at it. Right, I've uh, pulled the garlic. I'm just going to trample over the bed and put some compost over it. Um, so we've got uh, courgette, a few blueberries, one of the Primo 2 cabbages, beetroot. Some of it's quite big. And then we've got uh, another half bucket of the copper beans. Garlic's all pretty good size, to be honest. You know, it's just a case of uh, just wants a bit of a clean up now. You know, because it's just it's just a mucky skin that when it all comes, it'll be nice and white. You know, it'd be, it'd be uh, good size. But just to give you a bit of a point of uh, perspective for size, so an average disposable lighter there. Sort of put that that way. Give you a rough idea, sort of size. So they're a good size. You know, it's like a satsuma size, but it's a good size. Most of them are that size, to be honest. It's the odd, slightly smaller one, but it's still a good bulb. So there's 80 of them. So I've got to get all these back over to the van. Um, clean these up tomorrow. I'll try and dust some of the mud off as I'm bagging them up. And then uh, I'll wash them off. Probably take them back to, uh, I'll probably pull like one of these greens off to get them back down to a sort of single skin. Um, and then that'll, that'll dry in then, which we'll have a look at in a later video. Right, so on that note, um, I'm pretty much done here now for today. Like I said, I've got the spuds out. Um, obviously, there's other, other bits I've cropped as well. So uh, I've just watered all the cauliflower and, and the broccoli, give it a right good drag in with water, because it's not really rained today, and I'm kind of wanting it to rain. I know it sounds daft, but... So um, waiting for the onions to go over now. Um, otherwise, I'll force them over in the next week or two. But I've got that garlic out now, so I've got another bed free. So I'm going to put some of this um, green waste compost stuff on top just to pack the bed up, walk over it, probably give it a bit of a water just to help it stick. Um, so when it does rain, it actually wicks through. Because it is quite damp, that bed, but I don't want to walk on it too much because it is quite compacted. But uh, this other stuff's quite loose, so it needs a good couple of inches in it. So I've got, enough, I've got enough here anyway, so I'll put probably about four barrel loads full and I'll sling that on and that's another bed good to go. You know, where I've got all the cabbage stored and that makeshift net at home, um, that they can come up with the net and that clears the room up in the back garden and everything's kind of at the mercy of Mother Nature. And all I have to do is pop up and harvest stuff and deal with these potatoes. But we'll, we'll just have a quick look at that blight I was talking about before we go. Right, so if you're unsure um, what you're kind of looking for blight wise, Kind of things like this, you start seeing patches. It's like a, a grey brown patches appear, and you'll pick them off, and you'll you'll come back in a few days, and you'll see more. You know, so I mean, a lot of people would be like digging these out now, which um, you know I could do, but they're, they're not they're not ready yet. So um, I'll have ten minutes and pick some of these leaves off. But um, like I say, they're supposed to be tuber resistant to a degree, so they can they can sort of deal with it for a few more days and I'll just I'll just see how they get on you know um, I can't grumble I've had a, a good crop out of the uh, good crop out of all the other potatoes so I've still got all the main crops at home yet I haven't got blight as yet but uh, no doubt anytime soon it'll be uh, it'll be showing so I'll just let you have a look at this uh, bed before I next time you see it when I'm planting it up probably that's currently the guy, just a little bit of beetroot at the back there. I've kind of hilled it up a little bit. Uh, so obviously I can't put any compost at that end, but I'll, uh, I can put some down when I plant it up. 
So I've just got to fill that up. I'm just going to walk over it, level it out a bit, pull some weeds out, and then I'll fill that up to the top with uh, this other compost. It just saves me doing it later in the winter. I get it done now, and it kind of saves me a job in the winter and next spring, to be honest. They're all full then. So, right, on that note, thanks for watching. Take care, and I will see you next time. See you now. Bye-bye.